We are proposing, we as in the union and non-unionized employees at CHCH are proposing that we strike a company, and I'm thinking of a model similar to uh, the way that the Saskatchewan Rough Riders function. It's a community-owned station with a board of directors or a board of governors made up of stakeholders in the region from Halton, Hamilton, and Niagara who would hire a CEO. The CEO would report back to them, and the model would um, encompass uh, a programming schedule that would be predominantly local news with other uh, Canadian programming as well. So we would have opportunities for independent producers, existing programs, and content that we would uh, generate ourselves. So this is really a way of taking uh, matters into your own hands. We don't have a choice. And if you read everything that has been published in terms of the state of the industry today, the current models don't work. There has to be a new model put forward, a radical new model put forward, and this is it. It's a model that if it is successful and if the CRTC agrees to give us a chance, uh, we could probably replicate this in other communities across the country. We cannot allow a license in a market this size to simply disappear. It, it, it would be incomprehensible, it would be unforgivable if the CRTC allows that to happen. So, so what do you need from the CRTC then? We need to, first of all, we have to get before them in April. In April, they will be deciding how to address the crisis that is facing Canadian broadcasters today, and that is how to deal with local and regional news development, local and regional news content. We have to intervene and let them know that we have a model. Uh, it's a different model. It's a radical different model, but we think it can work. And it may be what is necessary to protect Canadian and local news in Canada. We have to get there. We have to raise some funds to get there in April, and then we have to secure the license to get that. It's another meeting uh, before the CRTC. But in April, they will also be discussing how to disperse funds within a fund of which there is $60 million, $40 million allocated for English programming, um, and that money has come from cable providers. It's not taxpayer money, but it is money from the people who are making uh, a profit in this industry, the cable providers. It's a subscri subscription-based fund. I think it's 50 cents per subscriber. We would like to take a portion of that. The money is uh, available to markets under a million, of which we would qualify, for local content. It's called the Local Improvement Fund. We're saying give us a chunk of that money, let us get the station, let us continue with our proposal, and you can then look at it and perhaps replicate it in communities across Canada. It's really what we really need to do right now is to rally people in, in Hamilton to tap into resources to get some funds available to go after this money, or we are going to lose the license. So it sounds like a pretty good fit for this for this fund. I think so. We would fit. We would. We would. I really believe we would be eligible for some money in this fund. That fund would subsidize the plan. The plan is still a commercially viable station. Uh, we would sell. We would make our commercials less expensive than they are today. Therefore, more local businesses would be able to uh, afford to to advertise on our station. Right now, a lot of the ads are priced out of the market, and we rely heavily on national advertising. We want to go back into the community and say the combination of the two sources of revenue would allow this to be a viable uh, television station that would finally serve the community and be owned by the community. Would you also have to raise money on an ongoing basis in the community, or would that just be for the initial half a million? That would be the initial half a million or seed money to get it launched. I think afterwards we would be fine with the, we're proposing that we would be a standalone model. Uh, we're not looking to taxpayers. We're looking for money from this fund. We simply are saying support us through your advertising. Let us have some of this money as seed money. We do need the money to get to the CRTC. But beyond that, we think that this model would be a viable uh, new model for television. Now, what kind of uh, feedback are you getting uh, from, from within the station at this point? Absolutely everybody is on board. We have our staff is on board. As I mentioned, we've met this week. It's a, it was a meeting with all staff. 
we have formed committees. We're going back out into the community to rally the troops to show the CRTC that the people in this community, people in Hamilton, people in Halton, people in Niagara, don't want to see the license disappear, that they are going to support us. We have tremendous support from three levels of government. Uh, Sophia Agilanidis was the first one on board, and, and she has really been able to tap her resources and get groups behind us. We've got lawyers behind us. We've got a great consultant who's a former vice president of television and radio at CBC and uh, an international consultant, and he's steering the ship and helping uh, take us to the CRTC. So we, right now we have tremendous support both within the station and outside in the community and we're just asking that people recognize that we are now at a crisis situation this license could disappear we have to do something it has to be done now and the CRTC has to know that they have to make some radical changes if they want to protect not only Canadian programming but specifically local news